This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and I have a really interesting lock for you today. Those of you who have been with me for a while may recall video 527 entitled Pick Proof Your Quick Set for Under a Dollar. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the description below. But in that video, I credited a vintage lock for inspiring the modification I made. This is that vintage lock. It's the Heinz key system which Seagull put into a variety of their products starting in the late 1960s. This cylinder was sold as part of a so-called Jimmy proof interlocking deadbolt system. The Heinz key system has two main advantages. First, it would be very difficult to drill because of the hardened insert you see at the top of the plug and hardened ring around it. Second, any attempt to pick this lock by the unwary is very likely to actuate a trap, which will cause the cylinder to seize up and prevent any means of non-destructive entry. That means no picking and even the key will cease to work. So you have one chance to pick it, and if you mess up, it's game over. However, this does have a weakness, and the weakness is that it's a very distinctive lock. I'll know from 10 feet away that this is the Heinz key system, and I'll also know that the trick to defeating it is setting the pin stacks on slots 2, 3, and 4 to the second shear line. That'll make a little more sense once I show you what's inside, but before we do that, we'll need to pick this open. So let's put this in a vise and get to picking. I'm going to use this wiper insert as a turning tool and a medium hook in 18 thousandths. Okay, little click out of one. Two is binding. Click out of two, but recall on two, three, and four, we need to go to the second shear line. Okay, we got that to the second shear line, moving on to three. Click out of three, trying to push that to the second shear line. And I think I've done that. Moving on to four. Click out of four and let's push that to the second shear line. Okay, before I move on, I'm going to check two, three, and four again, just to make sure they're where I left them. And it's a good thing I did because number three has dropped down. I have that back where I put it before. Okay, I think two, three, and four, which was where our trap pins are, are correctly set. So let's move on to five and six, nothing there. I let off a little bit of tension because I probably overset something on two, three, or four. Back to five, click there, six. Okay, click out of six, we should be there we go, we got this open. And the trap did not engage. Okay, let's take this apart and I'll show you what's inside. To disassemble this, the first thing we need to do is remove the two screws on the back. Then I will need the key and a follower, and the plug should slide out. Okay, this plug looks pretty normal with one exception. You can see circular grooves milled next to slots two, three, and four. I'll show you what those grooves are for in just a moment. But first, let's drop the key pins out. They should be all standard. Now let's move on to the driver pins. Number one should be standard, and it is. Now number two is where things start getting a little bit more interesting. The first thing to come out of slot two is a small wafer and the second thing to come out of slot two is a hollow pin. Let me show you what that hollow pin is for. If the hollow pin is exposed 
to this round groove on the cylinder, it will drop down and lock up. The cylinder will not be able to move. If, however, this little wafer is in between the hollow pin and that circular groove, it will glide right over. And that's how the trap pin works. When you pick a lock, you're most likely to hit the first shear line, which will expose that hollow pin to the circular groove and will lock things up. The key, however, lifts it past that first shear line and allows everything to operate smoothly. So we should find the same arrangement in slots three and four. Here's our wafer in three and our hollow pin from three. And here is our wafer in four. and our hollow pin in four, then five and six should be standard. And indeed they are. Now we can drop these pins out, nothing unusual about them. Okay folks, before we wrap up, I should address one comment that I know I'll get from my more savvy viewers. And that is, you should have used a plug spinner to bypass the trap. Well, I did try one, 10 times in fact, and it worked once. Given that you only have one chance to bypass the trap, I don't think a plug spinner is a viable option. So that's all I have for you today on the Heinz key system. It's a really nice old lock, and it's made with more attention to stopping picking than most of its modern equivalents. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.